Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to finish up the suspension on the Tamiya Porsche and work through bag C. Okay, step 15, the front damper stay. We need two M3x15s, two 3x8 step screws. You want the silver ones though, and not the black ones I have here. The black ones are for the steering kingpins. We need two 4mm washers, two ball nuts, and two 6x7 spacers. For plastic, there's two F2 upper arms, and of course we need the damper tower. First in the upper holes, nearest the square holes, we'll fit the ball nuts. From the back, we insert one of the long screws and slide a spacer over the threads. Add a tiny dab of thread lock, then we thread on a ball nut, and nip it up so it's nice and tight. Repeat with the other one, and that's the top damper mounts fitted. Next we have the top arms. And these are the step screws that we actually want. The black ones were for the steering and they're a little bit bigger. We add a little bit of grease to the step in the hopes it will cut down on the wear from the fibre damper tower. Pop it into the hole, add a washer and thread it into the top arm. Now I'm still thinking it would be good to change the top arms for a couple of ball joints so we don't have to worry about the wear. I'll have to do a bit of research for parts though. And unlike the rear top arms, which were ludicrously loose and wobbly, the front ones actually feel perfectly fine. There's almost no wobble and they move quite freely. Pretty good. With both arms on, that's the damper mount ready to fit. OK, step 16, fitting the damper mount. We need two M3x10s, two 3x10 self-tappers, two 3mm washers, two M3 nuts, the two front drive cups, the front damper mount, mount, the front spacer and the front gearbox. First we'll fit the damper mount mount to the gearbox with the two self tappers. It would have been nice if we could have fitted the mount to the mount before mounting it to the gearbox, but it would be a little tight to get in there with a screwdriver. It might be doable, but there's a good chance we damage things trying to get at the screws. Once the mount mount is on, we can fit the actual damper mount. From the front, we need to install the two M3 screws with washers under the heads into the two middlemost holes. Then on the back, we slot in a spacer with the cutout towards the top. The spacer is a good enough fit that it'll pretty much stay put by itself. But to be sure, keep hold of it until you have the screws through the holes in the mount mount. Next, we add a tiny bit of thread lock to the threads and spin on the nuts. One side has plenty of clearance to get things started, so start there and stabilise the structure. The other side has the lump for the bevel gear in the way, so some tweezers to hold the nut while you get it started is a good idea. Once both nuts are finger tight, we can go in with some pliers and nip them up the rest of the way. You can see the two self tappers are partially obscured by the fibre damper mount. So we'd end up tearing up the edge with a screwdriver if we built it the other way round. And that just leaves the cups. And all we do is grease up the splines on the first cup and pop it in. And on the second cup, we add some grease to the pin and the spline and then pop that one in too. Simple. OK, step 17, the front drive shafts, which are essentially the same as the rear ones. The shafts are a slightly different length and the axles are a little bit different, but the joint and the construction is exactly the same. So I'm just going to cut to them being complete and if you want a guide you can find the rear shaft I think in the part 3 video. Right, step 18, the front axles. We need four 4x10 four step screws, two 3x22 screw pins, two 5mm ball ends and two 1510 bearings. Then there's the two uprights. Now these are both the same, but they are on their own parts tree away from all the other bits. A C1 and a C13. Remember, these are sided, so keep track of which is which. And we need two F1 lower arms. First, we'll thread the ball ends onto the arms on the uprights. There's only one hole, but we do need to make a left and a right hand part. When they're both on the chassis, we want the balls to hang low under the arms. Then we pop a bearing onto the axle and slide it in from the inside of the upright and press the bearing into place. Do both and you should have two assemblies that are a mirror image of each other. 
Next we have C13 and C1. Now they both have a right side and a right way up, so check the diagram carefully. To fit them, we just pop the end of the drive shaft through the slot and line up the upright with the hole. Then we thread in the step screws, but keep in mind the uprights have threads moulded in, so they go in very easily. We just need to thread them in until they stop, plus a little tiny extra tweak. Lastly, we offer up an arm to the assembly and pop in a screw pin and nip it up. Do both, make sure they match the diagram and they're ready to fit to the gearbox. Step 19, fitting the suspension. We need two 3x18 step screws, two 7x2 spacers, a red urethane bushing, which we need to cut in half with a sharp knife, so we have two half-size red urethane bushings. The U-shaped shaft, or at least that's what Tamiya call it, and the gearbox. First we'll pop the urethane bushings into the drive cups. We need to press them all the way to the bottom so they're sitting nice and flat. Then we'll add a little bit of anti-wear grease. Now it's probably worth noting if you're planning to run a car like this outside, you're generally better off not greasing up the suspension and the dog bones. The grease picks up all the tiny bits of grit and it will eat the metal in no time. Indoors or on a prepared track, it's not much of a problem though, so a little bit of grease does help keep things nice and smooth. Next we offer up the arms to the gearbox and fit the U-shaft. It's a little bit of fiddle to get everything lined up at the same time, but thankfully Tamiya tapered the ends of the shaft, so as long as you're fairly close it will find its way home. With the shaft in, we can fit the drive shafts into the cups and get the upper arms lined up with the uprights. Now we add a little bit of grease to the step of a step screw and offer it up to the hole in the top arm. When it's far enough through, we can add the spacer, then we thread it onto the upright. Nip it up, repeat on the other side, and that's the front suspension fitted. Check that it all moves nicely, and there won't be much down travel, they should just go slightly below level. Check nothing catches or wobbles too much. If it's all good, we can put together the dampers. Step 20, the dampers. <laughs> we need four damper shafts, eight 2mm eclipse, eight o-rings, four W3 bodies, four W1 bottom caps, four V1 rod ends, four V8 pistons, the ones with a single hole, four V3 spacers, and four V11 spacers. And of course we need the damper oil. Okay, piston first, and we need to clip an e-clip into the lower hole on a shaft. Add a piston, then we clip another e-clip on the top. Easy to do, just take care not to ping the e-clips across the workbench. They do have a tendency to phase into another dimension of lost parts. Next we'll add the spacers to the shaft. In effect, these shorten the dampers. Not as nice as shorter dampers, but they will of course work just fine. Add some oil to the shaft before sliding on the spacers. We need to try and reduce as much of the trapped air as we can for the next step. Now the shaft can go into the body and we can use something blunt to hold the shaft in place while we fit the o-rings. Now Tamiya wants us to do it in a different order, but I like to add the o-rings after the shaft to help avoid damaging the inside of the o-rings. We can oil up the threads and the shaft and slide on the o-rings before fitting the bottom cap. If you fit the o-rings and cap first, the cap will squeeze the o-rings making for a tighter entry for the shaft which in this case really isn't a good thing. Admittedly, the threads on the Tamiya shafts are of high quality, so the chance of tearing anything is quite small, but every precaution does help avoid leaks in the future. The last bit for this is to grab the shaft with some pliers and a bit of cardboard so we don't score the shaft, and then we thread on the rod end. The rod ends have preformed threads, so they should spin on very easily. Rinse and repeat, and we've got the bodies complete. Okay, step 21, filling the dampers. We need four bladders, four W2 caps, the bodies, and a plastic tray, as this can get a bit messy. Basically, the idea is you want to fill the bodies with oil. Usually very easy, but with those extra spacers, these have a bit more trapped air than usual. We can almost fill the body with oil, then gradually move the shaft up and back down. Most of the air should come straight up to the surface. Add a bit more oil and repeat until you can move the shaft up and down slowly without seeing any bubbles. 
take care not to let the piston break the surface or you're going to introduce more air. Next add some more oil so the level is just below the top. Drop a bladder in which should displace a little bit of oil and any remaining air. Then we thread on a cap until it bottoms out. And as it goes you'll most likely find some oil will get squeezed out which is quite normal although a bit messy. Clean up with a paper towel, repeat with the rest and you should have a set of dampers that actually damp. Step 22, the springs. We need the four springs, four V5 spring retainers and then we come to the preload spacers. Now the kit comes with three thicknesses, four of each. You can experiment with them as they just clip on. But Tamiya has a thin for the front and a thin and a medium at the rear. Okay, so to build, all we do is slide on a spacer, pull the spring back and insert a spring retainer so it fits over the rod end. Then let go of the spring. Build up the rest so there's two fronts and two rears and they're ready to fit to the gearboxes. Step 23, the rear dampers. We need two 3x18 self tappers, two 7x2 spacers, two flange tubes and a rear gearbox. To fit, all we do is clip the tops of the dampers onto the ball ends on the damper mount. Pop a flange tube into the lower rod end so the flange is on the inside. Insert the screw from the outside and add a spacer to the inside. <laughs> Line it up with the hole on the lower arm and do up the screw. Repeat on the other side and the suspension should be working and feel nice and smooth. As usual, if it doesn't, now's the time to find out why and fix it. Right, step 24, the front dampers. We need two 3x15 self-tappers, two flange tubes, the dampers and the front gearbox. Not too surprisingly, this is pretty much the same as the rear. We clip the damper onto the top ball, insert the tube, add the screw, no spacer this time, and then we thread the screws into the outer holes in the lower arm. Same on the other side, and that's bag C complete. We now have both gearboxes ready, lubed up with working suspension. And keeping in mind that it's an early 90s Tamiya, so far other than the rear top arms, it's all rather nice and lots of fun to put together. Next time we'll be onto the chassis and electronics. Although we might split that up, we'll have to see how it goes. Okay, right, well, so that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!